Hello. Happy Saturday. Elder gal here, Allison. And uh, hopefully, I noticed the last time I did a live stream that there was like a weird um, glitch uh, from my internet. So sorry if the sound gets weird or something, a glitch happens. I don't have any control over my uh, internet going in and out. And unfortunately, I live in a more remote area, I would get, I would say. And so it, it tends to be spotty sometimes. So I apologize in advance if that's the case. Anyway, welcome to uh, the stream today. Uh, I, I said just join me for a chat because I'd never really know when I schedule it necessarily what I'm going to talk about. But today, the subject is going to be about change, change and transitions. And um, so I'm going to explore that a little bit and hopefully we get more people join the, the stream and we can uh, address some questions. But first, I want to send a big thank you out there to everyone who has subscribed thus far to the channel because um, I am really closing in on a thousand subscribers. I mean, there was a big boost uh, about in the last month, I guess. So I hopefully, fingers crossed, fingers crossed that that occurs within the next maybe month, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. hopefully. <laughs> I never know when YouTube's going to push out a video. So when they push out a video, then I get views and subscribers. It's not like great mystery. And when they don't push out a video, I don't get that. So uh, that's kind of what happens. But anyway, I'm very grateful to everybody who has subscribed thus far and watched any of my videos. Thank you all. Tremendously grateful to you. Um, so the other thing I want to talk about is uh, it is a beautiful spring day here. I don't know where it is. I'm on the West Coast, so I don't know what it's like in your neck of the woods, but um, it is beautiful. I'm loving spring being here. I really am. I, you know, I like cold weather. I don't like snow particularly, but um, I don't like the, I mean, I like the cold. I just don't love a lot of snow because I used to when I was young, but now I have to walk on it and not fall. So that's the main reason. Otherwise, I would pretty much still like the snow. But um, yeah, but I really, I don't know. For some reason, I was really anxious for spring this time. So anyway, we're going to uh, talk about change. I mean, there's a lot of uh, things that people have said about change. The one thing that I really like is that the only constant in life is change. You know, that's the only thing that we can guarantee is going to happen. There's going to be changes. There's going to be changes physically, mentally, emotionally, relationship-wise, job-wise, whatever. There's always going to be changes. And the weird thing is, is humans don't really like change that much, which is kind of interesting. So we always have a part of ourselves that resists change to some degree. Now, some people more than others. Some people love change a lot more than other people. I'm about half and half. I'm a person that likes change um, and still do, even though I've gotten older. But I also... Um, resist change sometimes. And I did even when I was younger. So I'm about half and half on this, like the change thing. It depends on what the change is, I think. You know, it depends on what the change is. But change can be very, very difficult. Now, one thing I will say is that change is going to happen whether you do anything or not. So if you choose to just be a passive observer on your own life, to your own life, then change is still going to happen. You're just not going to be active in it. You're not going to be doing anything to facilitate that. So my attitude is, you know, get in there and make some change happen on your own. In other words, changes are going to happen anyway. You know, you're going to, first of all, you're going to get older. You're going to develop illnesses probably at some point in times in your life. Things are going to change in your family. They're going to change with your job. Everything is always going to change. But if you really want something to be different, you have to do something. You can't just sit there and just say, oh, change will take care of it. I take care of it, but in a way you don't want. So my attitude is why not be the change in your own life? 
you know, be the change in your own life. So I'm a big believer in that. But, you know, I've always had some issues with change. I mean, we all have. I, I've known very few people in my life that all they want is just things to change all the time. Usually, if they're like that, it, it's sort of mental illness issue going on. Because most of the time, most of us do not want change constantly. Like we want, we want periods of peace and quiet and you know, that kind of thing. I mean, I, I feel like that, especially as I'm getting older, which is pretty normal, I think, is to want more peace, you know, want more peace in my life. So anyway, the reason this came up for me is I was thinking about uh, topics for today is because I'm I'm on the verge of a transition in my life. And by that, I mean that I've wanted to move for quite a while. Um, and I was initially just going to move to a larger city, but the timing wasn't right. And I had to kind of give up on the housing that came forward there. So I'm, you know, I'm back to kind of square one, but honestly, what I really want to do, and I know, I know it's going to sound really, well, it's not going to sound that crazy because I've lived in other places in the world before, but, uh, I really want to live overseas. And in particular, I really would like to live at least a couple of years, two, three years at least, in Europe. Now, interesting, that used to never even be an option. But of course, now being retired and on, I'm on a low amount of Social Security, believe it or not, it is cheaper to live in a lot of places in Europe than it is in the U.S. now. Rents generally are, unless, and I wouldn't live in like a major capital city, but uh, rents are less generally in many countries. Uh, cost of living overall, you don't need a car. They, they, a lot of uh, Europe, is, it's not really car based. And so you don't have to have a car. So this has been something not new to me. I've been thinking about this probably before I moved in here five and a half years ago. But now I really, before I get too old to enjoy that, I would love to do it. Plus, it would be great for Elder Gal channel. I would have whole bunches of new content and stuff to share uh, if I did that kind of transition or move in my life. Now, the thing is, is being able to make that happen because you, I still have to have some money saved, which is something I'm going to work on this year. And honestly, I probably wouldn't be able to do it till next year uh, unless... Unless I just bite the bullet and like get a job for a while, I would lose some benefits in doing that. And but if that would make the dream happen, you know, sometimes you got to do tough things to make the change happen. And uh, so I've actually thought about that. Um, and I'm not going to share yet exactly where I've already researched a lot of places that I might like to go. The problem is getting visas, like resident visas, even for a year, because with the income I have, I don't qualify in most countries. It's just still a little bit too low. So I'm trying to think about how I would actually do it. I mean, there is a possibility of just going and, you know, staying up to three months in each country and kind of moving around and, um, you know, avoid getting an actual resident visa. But I could only see doing that for maybe about a year. Uh, I think it would be too much to do after that. So, um, so I'm still looking into it. I will be sh sharing on this channel. I'm just, this is the first time I've really talked about it, I think. And so I'm going to share on the channel what, you know, what steps I'm taking and how I'm, because, you know, something like this requires a lot of planning a lot of planning. So if you want change to happen, sometimes you got to make a lot of plans. And uh, I'm in the planning stage and the figuring out how to make this happen stage. So stay tuned for that. But let's get back to the concept of change in general. So the thing is, is that the sooner in your life you can make friends with change, the better. Okay, the sooner in your life you can make friends with change, the better you're going to be. Because change is stressful. It can be stressful. And if you're a person that kind of rolls more easily with the change that you're, go you're going through, 
the easier your life is, you know, the easier there's less stress, less frustration, less chaos, um, all that sorts of things. Now, some kinds of change are traumatic for anybody. For instance, health issues. If, if you're dealing with a health issue, uh, an illness of some kind, especially long lasting, that creates change right there. And that's certainly never wanted. I don't think anybody wants that kind of change. Um, but, you know, even finding ways to deal with that is really, really important. It is very important, no matter what kind of, of challenge you're dealing with, to be able to find the things you can cope with more easily about it and then, in, you know, embrace those. I'm not saying you're going to enjoy it necessarily, but embrace those. I mean, even in planning something fun, there's stuff you have to do that you don't want to do. You know, anytime you're making plans for something, there's a part of it that you have to go through. You know what I'm talking about, where you're like, mm, yeah, I hate doing that part. You know, for some people, let's say you're planning a major trip just of some kind. And you have to get, you know, all your ducks in a row for that. And you have to make reservations and all that. Some people love doing that. Some people hate doing that. Um, and then you've got to figure out, you know, how you're going to, you know, handle everything back home while you're gone. And then you have to figure out packing and do you have the right suitcase? I mean, there's there's no end to the things you have to decide when you're doing something even like that. So, uh some people love that. I used to love that. I haven't done a tremendous amount of traveling in the last 30 years. So I don't know how much I'm going to love that again, but we'll see. So um, I want to caution you about when there's change, the fact that change is so uh, much a part of life, that if you're one of those people that's, again, just chooses to do nothing, to do, you know, just sit back and go, ah, oh, I don't want to take action. Well, then change is going to do it for you. Change is going to take action for you. And that's just the nature of it. And so maybe that's a good thing, but maybe it's not a good thing for you. So it's, some, it's a question you have to ask yourself. I do know one thing. When you're really uncertain about a decision, let's say you've got a choice between A and B that you want to do in your life. And you're like, oh, well, I really can't decide, right? You can't make that choice. Then sometimes it is good to, to step back until you know, the intuition or whatever comes to you about which is the right choice. In other words, you don't want to jump into something just to make it happen. You want to actually have a feeling that this is the right thing to do. So I will say that is important. And because otherwise you can just be chasing after stuff that ends up not serving you well in life. You know, it, it's, they end up being dead ends or, you know, you end up at another crossroads that isn't good for you or, you know, whatever. So I was going to share with you here. About, and if anybody's in the chat that would like to share about change and like how you are affected by change, how has it impacted your life? Please comment. I'd love to hear what your experience is. But I was going to share with you something I remembered when I was thinking about this topic about change. And way back when I was 22 years old, I joined the Peace Corps. I, I did vid a couple of videos on this months and months ago. You can probably find them on my channel there. No, they never got pushed out. Nobody watched them. But anyway, I was in the Peace Corps in Africa. And this was back in the late 70s. And, uh, you know, it wasn't like the world today where everything is connected by technology and, you know, there's modern conveniences everywhere. No, in 1970 and 78. Um, oh, thanks. Thanks for commenting, Hatchet. Yeah, divorce is a big change for sure. So anyway, uh, there wasn't all the modern conveniences and stuff back in the day. You know, you... <laughs> So going to Africa was like going to the moon. Okay. It was very, very stressful. And there was no, to show you how weird it was back then, you couldn't even make a phone call from Africa to the United States without going through Europe. In other words, you had to call an operator in Europe. And then there was a transatlantic cable 
if anybody's old enough to remember this, there was a transatlantic cable that went from, I don't know exactly where in Europe. I don't know if it was the UK or the continent or whatever, but it went across the ocean. And that's how you made phone calls back then. This is in the 1970s. So you couldn't call directly like from Africa to the United States. You had to call the operator, like in our case, it was the operator in Paris. And then she would place the call and then she would call you. You had to sit and wait at a phone and then she would call you back when she reached the person in the United States. This was in 1977. OK, it's hard to even imagine. It was so dark ages back then about this, but it was anyway. I don't know why I shared that, but it was just to give you a picture of the place. So, so when I was in Africa, when we first got there, and it was quite a culture shock back then. And uh, we get into the, I, I was, I served in the um, a country of Togo, which is next to Ghana in West Africa. And uh, there was, I think there was 20 of us about 20, 22 of us Peace Corps volunteers that all went over at the same time. And half of us were males and half females. So it was, you know, pretty evenly split. And, uh, but we get over there and um, I just kind of had a meltdown. I mean, a meltdown like the second day because, um, well, one of the reasons, again, this is about, but I mean, this was a tremendous change is the reason I'm bringing this up. It was a tremendous change to, the way I lived in the world, you know, I mean, I had grown up, my dad was in the military. I grew up in Europe when I was a young child. So it's not like I, and I'd been traveled, I traveled a few places. So it's not like I'd never been anywhere, but Africa was like intense. Okay. So <laughs> what I remember is just having a meltdown and just crying like the second day. And part of the reason for that is we went to the medical lecture by the Peace Corps doctor and the Peace Corps doctor told us, and I am not joking about this. He's telling us about all the diseases that could kill us in Africa. And then he gets to the part where he says, <laughs> he says, now, if you're bit by a rabid dog, because rabies was rampant, apparently. He said, if you're bit by a rabid dog, you need to catch the dog, cut the head off the dog, and bring it down to the Peace Corps office so we can test it for rabies. And I'm like, what? <laughs> catch the dog, cut the head off the dog. I'm not even joking. That is literally, and a bunch of us, looked at our watches and said, when is the next flight back to the U.S. at that point? Seriously. I mean, that was the scariest thing to hear, like the day after I arrived. So anyway, I had a meltdown. We got back to the hotel. I, I was crying. I mean, I was just crying. I was like, what have I done? What have I done? And uh, a bunch of other volunteers who were very kind and very compassionate talked me down. It got me functional. But my point is, I did not deal with that kind of radical change very easily. OK, it was a, too much for me. My system was on overload. And that was when I was 22. So it, it's hard. It's difficult to go through stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's my I, I somehow that popped into my head because I just thought, wow, you know, I've been good about change in some respects in my life, but other times I've just, no, no, did not deal well with it. I also did a, a video on my channel about living out of my van before I moved to where I live now. I lived out of my van for a year and uh, it was too much. It was too hard for me. There, I mean, I did it, but it was... It was not emotionally comfortable for me. In some ways, I loved it. I love driving. I love, you know, exploring new places. That that part I loved. What I did not love was the day to day of that. So uh, anyway, so we all have decisions to make sometimes. We all have things. Anybody else have anything that they want to 
plan or whatever, and they're thinking about to make a change in their own life out there. I know a few of you are, are watching, so no, don't leave. <laughs> anyway, uh, I welcome any other questions you have too, but I just thought it was an interesting, you know, the idea of dealing with change and transitions in life is is a fascinating one because some people are deal more easily with it than others. Uh, sometimes we deal with it better when we're young. Sometimes we deal better with it when we're older, strangely enough. Um, so it's not necessarily directly age related. Um, so uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm trying to be in a good mood. I'm having, I, I will just share with you. I'm having a, I'm having a difficult phase right now. I think I shared it. Maybe it was in the last live stream or maybe the one before. I don't know. But um, I'm kind of, things are happening around me. I don't want to get into detail, but uh, it's just creating a lot of stress for me. And I and believe it or not, it's not really about YouTube at all. So thank gosh, I, I love having the YouTube channel and it's um, really great. But yeah, I mean, we all go through phases that, things are more disruptive. I guess disruptive is the word. Things feel disruptive right now. And, and uh, I'm trying to just, you know, hang in. The weird thing is, and, you know, I've talked on this channel. I know I'm bouncing around here. I've talked on this channel before about having sleep problems at times, which I used to never have. And I went through a bad sleep thing, not this past week, but the week before. And like four days or four nights of just trouble getting to sleep, staying to sleep, whatever. Now this past week, when things actually feel more chaotic to me, I'm sleeping fine. Makes no sense. Like sometimes, I don't know if you're this way, but when I'm going through really a lot of stress, like much more than normal, like not just the normal every day, I sleep better. I just noticed that when things would, would be really bad at times, I would like sleep fine. And yet things can be normal. And then all of a sudden I have a problem sleeping. So anybody else out there have sleep issues? Anything like that? <laughs> Don't make me beg for comments in the chat, please. Don't do it. Don't make me beg. Um. <laughs> Anyway, if you can drop a like though below before we end the video, that'd be great. I'm going to stay on here a few more minutes and talk about whatever comes. Up. This is now stream of consciousness. We have approached that level that I have now done with my primary topic. And now we're in stream of consciousness land. So uh, <laughs> my plans for the rest of today is I'm going to shoot a video for my other channel my spiritual channel. I'm going to shoot a video for that. I'm going to go for a walk, um, do some exercise. And uh, I need to post some things for sale on eBay. I haven't done it. Well, not anything hatchet, but <laughs> you can bring as long as it's like, you know, <laughs> appropriate. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is that, yeah, I haven't done eBay in 15 years and, but I got a bunch of stuff I need to sell and I need to raise some extra money. So I'm, I got to do that, which I'm not looking forward to doing that. I don't, I used to love doing it, but I know it's changed on eBay. And so, uh, uh, yeah, so I'm not real sure how it's going to go. Anybody do eBay? <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. I got to have some water. But um, yeah, do they even still do auctions on eBay? See, I used to love, I used to put my stuff up for sale. I did a lot of sales back around like 20 something years ago. And then I did another rash of sales about... Um, oh, you have hatchet you've sold on eBay. Uh, have you done the auction thing or just selling it for set price? Uh, what do you mean by they have AI now? 
What does that mean for me? Like how, when I'm listing something. But anyway, what I was going to say is that, and then I sold about 15 years ago, I sold a bunch of stuff for on there. Um, so yes, is that, what does that mean? Auctions or, okay. But do they, they actually have auctions. Okay. Anyway, I, I'm not looking forward to exploring all that again because I thought I was done doing eBay and then now I got to get back into it and at least put some stuff up. So anyway, um, that's the rest of my day. Anybody else doing anything fun the rest of their day? Oh, you can generate a description. Oh, that is helpful. Okay. That makes sense. I used to have to do all that using my own brain. So, um, yeah. So, and then for the week, uh, I've got a very, I hope you all tune in and watch my video Wednesday. I did a really very heartfelt video for Wednesday. I guess that's the best way I could describe it, but please uh, tune in and watch that. That'd be great. And, um, like I said, I'm closing in on that thousand. Now I, I just want to share with all of you that even though I'm going to hit a thousand subscribers, I don't know when, but I know I'm going to get there because I'm so close. That doesn't mean I'm going to be monetized yet because I still lack about half the watch hours I need to get monetized. So, um, oh, so you're going to go with uh, do music or listen to music, Hatchet? Okay, that's cool. Yeah, you know, I play music too. Yeah. In fact, we, <laughs> I'll tell you this. This is cute. Uh, this is funny. So, about when was it? Two weeks ago or about two, almost two weeks ago, I played music at an open mic in my town. And um, I only did it because my friend was organizing it and I wanted to support him and, you know, whatever. So I went and played and it actually was well received, but I'm not a bar person. I don't hang out in the bar. <laughs> Have, I never really was as much of a drinker anyway, but I didn't really hang out in bars much after I was like 24, I guess. And, um, uh, Oh, that is cool. Anyway, so the thing is that I was, it occurred to me while I was sitting in there and I did two sets of three songs each, right? And, uh, but in between, you know, people, and people applauded and apparently people told my friend that they thought, you know, I had a lovely voice and I, you know, it was great and whatever. Fine. I really, you know, I'm not a person that I really, uh, I'm really into compliments about my music because I, I don't know if I, I know I told it on this channel before I've told everything on this channel before. not everything but um I didn't even start singing oh I think I went away and came back anyway um I didn't even start singing till I was 65 and so, and I just started relearning guitar. I used to play when I was a teenager, but I didn't relearn guitar till I was 65. I know that I'm like, you know, I'm, in, I love that I can sing and play, but you know, all those years, I didn't even think I could do that. So anyway, I'm very like realistic about it, I guess. So I don't get my head turned and people say, oh, I love your voice or whatever. I'm like, that's great. Thank you. But Obviously, I'm not, it's not going to, I'm not going to make it in the music world at this age. So, um, but anyway, the funny part about it is I was sitting there talking to a friend in between sets and I said, you know what? I didn't even realize this was on my bucket list, but apparently now I can cross off played music in a bar. Like I didn't even know that was going to be a thing for me in my life. <laughs> so it just goes to show you that surprises can happen at any time. Oh, Hatchet, let me read that. Okay, so you did karaoke. Oh, that's good. Well, you must sing well then if you if you almost won the contest without realizing it. So good.
Good for you. I don't actually like, well, of course I didn't sing till I was 65. So I don't do karaoke. I've never actually done that in a bar, but this was a situation where I was playing guitar and, you know, different musicians, like one of my musician friends joined me on one song and stuff like that, but I play guitar and sing. So it's, it's not really, yeah, different than karaoke, but yeah, I did it. I guess I'll add it to the bucket list and then cross it off. I think that's an efficient way to handle it. The Muppets. <laughs> you, you sang like the Muppets? Or are you? <laughs> I don't understand that. I don't understand what you just said. You can clarify for me. Anyway, we've been all over the place today. Oh, you do a jaw. A, a, is it a jaw harp? Oh, OK. OK, cool. Anyway, uh, we've been all over the place today. I again back to what I was originally talking about, which was choice. Um, that you, you know, basically, you have to make choices. You have to change up your life at times, or else life's going to do it for you. I guess that's the bottom line. So I'm a big believer in you know, changing things up. You know, when I moved here five and a half years ago to where I live now, it was a really good choice. It was such a good choice. I needed to leave Arizona. No, not because the law was after me, but I needed to leave Arizona. Oh, I see, Hatchet. Uh, oh, okay. They changed their voice. Oh, I see. See, I can't really do that. I can't really change my voice. So, but um, anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, I needed to leave Arizona. And so I was very happy to move. Oh, Cheryl. Hi. I'll stay on another couple of minutes for you. You have a question or anything? <laughs> I'm happy to take it. Um, but uh, yeah, I was happy to move here. But, you know, I, I've probably, you've, I know I've said this in other videos. I was raised in a suitcase. I was raised as an army brat. I was raised moving all the time. I have never lived to this day. I have never lived in the same place longer than six, about six, six and a half years in one place. Never have I ever done that. So I have been here. It'll be six years come July. And I'm really restless. Because that's just, that's my nature on this. You know, that's, that's what happens. So, uh, oh, that's fine. Thanks, Cheryl. Yeah, my dad was in the army hatchet. He was a, uh, well, when I was born, he was a captain. And when he, he was killed when I was 10 in um, Korea, he was stationed in Korea. And, it, and uh, he was a lieutenant colonel when he, when he died. So, but yeah, so I grew up until I was 10 years old in the army basically. And so to me, it is normal to move. It is normal to go to new places that does not stress me at all. And, uh, so, oh, that's neat. It must be pretty up there. Are you guys having spring in New York? Anyway, so I'm restless need to move. And it's just, I'll be sharing with you in the months to come what, what I'm going to choose to do, but got to do something, even if it means working for two, three months to, you know, have more money. So um, we'll see. Unless, unless I monetized on YouTube, <laughs> that would be the answer to all my prayers. Well, that's not too cold. 55. I think we're in the low 70s today and it's just beautiful. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll share with you. I'll, yeah, but anyway, drop a like below if you haven't already done so. Uh, share the, share the live stream, share the videos, anything you can do to get in those subscribers and, and watch out. It's the watch hours I really need. I really need watch hours. So I'm at probably 1800 watch hours short even when I hit um, a thousand subscribers. So oh, hoping a miracle will occur. It would be wonderful. 
because I would love just to do this to earn whatever extra money I do. So um, that'd be great. Anyway, it's been great to be in here. Thank you, Hatchet and Cheryl, for commenting uh, in the chat. I appreciate it. And hopefully next time we'll get more. I will do another live stream in two weeks. And uh, so hope to see you all there. And um, until next time, you know the drill. Be well. Be kind. Keep moving forward and uh, take care of yourselves. Okay, bye.